All right, excellent. Uh, welcome, everybody. Um, this is the session titled Pulp 2022 Year in Review. Uh, it is the opening session for PulpCon this year. And this morning, um, uh, Tanya and I will be presenting. So my name is Robin Chan. Um, I am the manager of the Pulp Development Team at Red Hat um, and wanted to give you all a quick overview. All right, um, so it's been a great year in terms of our project. And let me go to the next screen if I can figure out. Okay. All right, so here's a little bit of our over, overview and agenda for this talk. And um, just a reminder that uh, there will be no Red Hat product release names, numbers, or dates. Uh, no commitments are being made here. Um, if anything's being provided, uh, it is just for some. Uh, you know, general information, do not take these as commitments. Um, I am not authorized to speak on that, so. Um, all right, and they're hopefully just uh, helping you all provide some context for the project upstream. All right, let's get started. So first off, the big thing here is just a reminder that Pulp 2 is end of life um, at the end of the month. Uh, it is essentially when the last Red Hat product using Pulp 2 um, has also really reached end of support. So if you're wondering how we got to that date, um, that is roughly, roughly how we got there. Um, Pulp 2 has been in maintenance, so uh, you should be seeing that, um, you know, there's not a huge difference um, in all of that. Um, and if you're on Pulp 2, I would definitely encourage you to move to Pulp 3, uh, do some migrations, look at all of that. Um, a lot of the technologies that Pulp 2 is based on are also have been end of life for a while. So it's definitely something that is in your best interest to move forward on. Um, additionally, we have a Pulp 2 to 3 migration plugin, and that also is end of lifing at the end of this calendar year. Um, and you'll see some details there on the paths that are supported. Um, and I guess reach out to us if you have any other big barriers that's preventing you, um, problems that we can maybe give some advice or, or guidance on. Uh, that is definitely something we're interested in helping you do. So um, that is a little bit about um, Pulp 2 and our migration story going on. So hopefully this is not news to all of you. Um, and uh, let us know if there's any ways that we could be advertising that a little bit more if it, it is news. All right, and so I wanted to give you a little bit of some more context around some of the things shaping some of our efforts um, and just some kind of random information before we dive into the technology part, which Tanya will help us uh, go through. Um, but in general, um, it looks like, you know, our product releases for Red Hat um, that are using Pulp, our satellite, Rui, um, Ansible automation platform. And these, are, these products are roughly doing like a six-month cadence um, the Northern Hemisphere Fall is when Ansible Fest is, and the Spring is when Red Hat Summit is, and these really drive a lot of the uh, releases for the products and, and some of the larger features that are um, done uh, and, and, and for, those, for those products. So you'll see um, that driving some of our um, deadlines or some of our deliverables um, uh, for those products, and that's, you know, roughly, that's been the case, uh, but I guess we're just uh, being a lot more aware of that these days. Um, and uh, we also um, know that Pulp 3 has gone GA in the satellite and Rui products in 2022, which um, has also meant that we've had a lot of performance hardening, a lot of bug fixes around deadlocks and memory. So, um, you know, if you're concerned over Pulp 3 or your, your you know, knowledge of what it's being used in and how it's being used in production, uh, you know, we already know that Pulp 3 has been used in production uh, upstream and in lots of our community um, uh, environments, um, but it is also in um, satellite, you know, satellite and Rui uh, Red Hat products um, in production. So rest easy that a lot of issues have been found and addressed um, because of, of those releases. And um, Pulp 3 uh, continues to be a part of the Ansible product. Um, and it manages the Ansible collections and in execution environments um, as part of the Ansible Automation Hub uh, part of the, pro of the platform. And another thing that you may also see is the Galaxy NG, which is the upstream, uh, is um, a lot of those community members have been contributing to um, the Pulp project um, a lot more uh, 
collaboratively or not collaboratively, but a lot more collaboration seen from them. And you'll see that um, they are uh, making those contributions and the pulp team is uh, that, you know, the folks that have been contributing there um, have been doing a lot of like uh, kind of shepherding those, uh, not so much as actually uh, doing them uh, for that community. So that's been really great to see. Um, and um, you'll see that uh, Pulp Upstream is also on the GitHub issues now. We're not using Redmine anymore. And you'll see that there's um, GitHub projects as well. So um, hopefully that's, uh, that's definitely uh, was driven by a lot of feedback from the community. So thank you for giving us that, that feedback. Um, and also, you know, our discussions are happening on Discourse. Um, there's the, the URL there. Um, and I expect that we'll be uh, finally deprecating the mailing list soon. So if you're not over there, please go ahead and sign up. Um, you can take a look at that link there. And I will fi figure out a way to post this um, after, after this session. So, all right. And next up, I'm going to move it over to, hand it over to Tanya to take over the next slide. Thank you, Robin. Um, all right, so um, let's maybe look back into the like year and uh, see our, what uh, what we've done in pulp. Or it's I would say for all pulp community to just reflect on our what we achieved this year, and for folks who are maybe not that closely. Uh, looking into every pulp release, um, just to be aware of um, of what we are added and how we improved it. Uh, so we went through multiple Y releases from like pulp three seventeen to three twenty uh, one. Uh, there was a lot of work um, related to a role based access control, um, uh, and we um, added a proper Role support, and we started adding um, our back to um, many plugins. So it was a huge chunk of work. Thank you, everyone, for for working on that. Um, another effort was content signing. Um, it was mostly for the container and Ansible um, parts, and it's definitely not done. We'll continue working on that. Uh, and don't I put our stars for uh, every topic which we'll have uh, talks later this week at PulpCon. So don't uh, miss those. We'll talk about content signing more in, in more detail. Uh, telemetry was, uh, was another um, thing which we added. I, you can look at the analytics pulpproject.com, I think. Yes, Brian. Um, so. Dark, thank you. Um, uh, to see what we are collecting right now, uh, it's very important to notice that the uh, trust of our users comes first. So um, we, you can see um, everything what is collected um, in your logs, and of course, all the code is on GitHub. Uh, so that's a big effort, and it really helps us to understand our how Pulp is being used. And we'll definitely continue adding more metrics there. So again, don't miss out. Talk about it later uh, this week about adding uh, metrics. So we definitely went also through a lot of testing improvements, um, extended our CLI. There was a lot of work uh, in terms of deployment and installation. Yeah. Robin, can you? Yes, thank you. Um, All right, uh, and as Robin already mentioned um, before, uh, there was a lot of, in general, hardening and uh, improvements in terms of memory and performance. Um, I also want to mention that we now have a, like a new dev environment, again, thanks to our close collaboration and work with Galaxy and GFOX, and our, one of them will um, walk us through in uh, in their talk, and you will see more details about new OCI and next slide, please. All right. Uh, 
here I just added uh, some uh, more features in major improvements. Uh, there were plenty in terms of tasking system, caching, import, export, uh, and whatnot. So um, yeah, definitely take a look if you missed any of those. And uh, pop folks who are right now on the call, uh, let me know if we forget anything or if you want to add anything to this list. All right, then let's go to the next slide. Yes, thank you. So looking ahead, uh, what we are currently working on, planning to work on, or potentially thinking about. Um, I would say there is a one, the multi-tenancy is a big topic and uh, domains work is in progress. Definitely, um, again, join a call today uh, about that. Uh, we're also looking into simplifying user experience in terms of deployment and installation. Um, then uh, there are active discussions about zero time migrations, uh, which we believe is also important uh, and a big feature, especially in the world of services. Um, and uh, there are more things which potentially are, will be are looking into is like more object storage types. Uh, uh, there are some things which needs to be done for Airbag still uh, OS3 potentially an area where we might see more use cases uh, coming in and uh, integration with six store. So I think that's mostly it. Um, again, please feel free to add anyone if anything else uh, comes to your mind and you think we need to share. All right, sounds about it then. Um, so it's been a great year, a lot of hard work and um, a lot of new features and still a lot of things to do <laughs> as always. Um, so does anyone have any questions or anything to add? All right. Um, if not, then uh, Robin, you can close us out. Okay. Wonderful. All right. So I just want to say thank you to the Pulp team, to all of our contributors, all of our community members. Um, a lot of the um, work that was done this past year uh, really is a result of feedback from the community, um, your involvement and your engagement, um, whether it's um, on the Matrix channel chats, on um, issues being written up, um, even some of the emails and the discourse um, conversations, all of those have been super valuable in helping us um, understand uh, where we can make Pulp better um, and what your needs are. So I really, really appreciate that. I appreciate all the, the hard work for the folks on the team here that are our contributors and maintainers of the Pulp project. Um, it's been a really great year with a lot of good work done here. Um, and so I just really, really want to thank everybody. And I definitely invite more feedback, more engagement. Please keep us, um, you know, on our toes. Uh, let us know what challenges you're facing, um, what things you're seeing, um, and where, where, where your needs are here um, in using Pulp, because that is definitely super valuable and helping us um, shape. Um, as you saw, there's a ton of hardening and um, uh, uh, improvements that were made to Pulp this year, um, and a lot of that is thanks to you all um, in, in helping us understand um, what things you're seeing out there when you're using the software. So thank you, and continue getting involved, and we will take a break now. Um, our next session will start at 9, um, and I think we can go ahead and close out the recording. Daniel.